How you doing everyone, it's Jordan here from Switchwatch bringing you today's review of Trails of Cold Steel 3. This review is by Will, edited by myself, let's see what he thinks. Trails of Cold Steel is a series of games in the long-running Legend of Heroes universe from Nihon Falcom. This series has an enormous and dedicated cult fanbase, and I actually found the time to delve into this trilogy for now, as the fourth game is coming soon, only a few weeks before being handed a review copy of Trails of Cold Steel 3. As such, this is going to be a different kind of review. The reason for that is because the publisher at the time of writing decided to port only the third and newest game in the trilogy to the Switch. A big question many potential fans are probably going to ask is, can I start with Call of Steel 3? The answer to that is yes, but the game does a good job of catching new players up with its world and characters, but that job is not quite good enough. This is an intensely deep trilogy of games in an extravagantly grand and expansive fantasy world. Many long-time fans don't even recommend starting with Call of Steel at all, let alone the third game. That said, if you only have a Switch and you're desperate to try the series out, it is easy enough to enjoy this game by itself, but you will feel overwhelmed at times and confused when moments that are clearly supposed to hit hard don't hit hard at all due to a lack of context. This has been a long introduction, but it is necessary thanks to the publisher's odd choice of porting only the third game. Uh, with that in mind, I will be reviewing this game for fans and newcomers alike, looking at it from multiple angles at once. As a final note before we begin, I have played the first game in this trilogy, but not the second yet, and, and so I only felt half prepared for what I expected in Call of Steel 3. This is why I know that starting with the third game is possible, but not recommended. In terms of story, the Cold Steel series is set in the country of Erebonia, a place which underwent a sudden and exponential industrial and electrical revolution known as the Orbal Revolution 50 years prior to the events of the series. This revolution created an interwoven train network, the invention of cars, and even a kind of cell phone. In the first Call of Steel game, you play as Reen Schwarzer, a young man who enrolls at a military academy as whispers of a civil war grow louder. Reen and his class are your primary party of protagonists, a varied and lovable bunch. In this third game, you are still playing as Reen, but following two wars and a massive political, economic and social shift in the country, he is now only a graduate of Thor's military academy, but a war hero and a newly fledged teacher at the same school. The students have become the master. The game begins in an eerily similar way to the first game in the series, a prologue sets you several months into the game's story, with you commanding a team of students as they raid an enemy base and engage in intense combat. This team is your new cast of student protagonists, with Reen being their teacher and fellow soldier. After the prologue time winds back three months and you take control of Reen as he arrives at the school, this time as a member of staff. The story is introduced gradually and unfolds slowly, but there is still a lot of information made unclear to those beginning with Call of Steel 3. As someone who has played the first game but not the second, yet yeah, half of what I saw was familiar and exciting, half was a revelation which lacked a lot of impact but was explained well enough for me to follow and catch up on the events of the second game. In true The Legend of Heroes fashion, the game's story is a heavy one, there is nothing else compared to this series' storytelling and world building. No JRPG, no video game series at all comes close to the breadth and depth of world building and lore present in this series. If you're a fan of fantasy literature, if you read the novels of Robin Hobb, Joe Abercrombie, George R. R. Martin and so on, then you can see and appreciate the scale of this game's world, as well as its characters writing, political scale, class system, history and lore. It's an intense story with a lot to follow, but it is told clearly and eloquently, with a very good localization from the original Japanese. In fact, the writing here is stellar throughout. Wow. In terms of gameplay, if you've played the other games in the Call of Steel series, the gameplay here will feel very familiar to you. If you haven't, it's still nothing groundbreaking or unusual. This game provides a serviceable, addictive and satisfying combat loop that keeps your mind electrified and engaged from start to finish. The combat is the nitty gritty of the gameplay like with any JRPG. Here is a turn-based battle system with players commanding a party of up to four characters at a time. Encounters are not random, enemies appear on the battlefield and this gives you a chance to sneak up and hit them from behind to trigger a battle in which you start off with the upper hand. From there, combat is your typical JRPG affair. During combat you have attack, magic, skill and item options. Magic is known as arts and skills are known as crafts. While in the first game you cycle through a wheel of options at the start of each turn, here you have them mapped to your face buttons and your d-pad, which makes for a far more streamlined and intuitive, if minor change. 
Crafts are your most useful tools in battle. They require CP to execute, which builds when you attack or get hit. Using crafts deplete your CP, but also restores it a little upon a successful hit, so you almost never run out. Very little has changed in the combat system for Call of Steel 3. One main difference is that the combat simply looks flashier. The special attacks known as S-Crafts now have more dramatic and exciting animations tied to their execution. And a new mechanic is introduced, Brave Order. A Brave Order is a buff which you can use in combat to support your party, and it doesn't take up a turn, just like S-Crafts. Outside of combat, gameplay mostly consists of exploring the world, chatting with NPCs and party members, completing side quests and enjoying minigames such as cooking and fishing. Something that makes this series so wonderfully unique is the amount of attention to detail that's been put into each of the NPCs. As the story moves forward, random NPCs like shop owners have new things to say, demonstrating a unique personality and perspective from every single person you meet. This is no different here, as you can also spend your free time doing favours and chatting with other primary characters in order to strengthen your bond with them. Something which was introduced into the PS4 ports of Call of Steel 1 and 2 was the Turbo Mode. Renamed High Speed Mode in this game, it is a fantastic tool which allows you to heighten the pace during combat and when exploring the field and hub areas. This series is slow, both in terms of overall narrative and individual moments of dialogue. Liberal use of this mode is definitely encouraged to speed up slower segments and to get through combat with a little more pace, though no dialogue should ever be skipped. This is a richly detailed story with fantastic character writing and you should spend as much time talking, listening and reading as possible. The music of Trials of Cold Steel is a standout aspect of the entire series. The composers have time and time again delivered a bombastic, layered, complex and expansive soundtrack of militaristic tracks and soft melodies. These games shift in tone and theme often, and whatever you're up to in the game, there's a track that perfectly fits the mood. Whether you're in combat, dungeon crawling, shopping, relaxing, strolling through town, teaching a class, exploring a new location, or taking part in an intense dialogue sequence, the music perfectly fits the mood. The music for this game is recognisable to fans of the first two games, but you'll find here mostly brand new tracks which perfectly fit the series' brand, as well as a few recognisable tracks that have been remixed and expanded upon. As for the vocal performance, they remain consistently strong throughout. There isn't a weak acting performance to be found. The game's graphical power make it clear what kind of budget Falcom are working with, and yet the quality of English voice acting is absolutely top notch. The only notable difference here compared to the PS4 editions, of the first game at least, is which lines are voiced and which aren't. In the first game, the more serious moments are voiced, and most of the dialogue which takes place on the field wasn't. In Call of Steel 3, voices come from nowhere during conversations that are just, you know, written texts until suddenly they aren't. And occasionally a chat between two people will have one of them voiced and the other silent. That is a bit weird. A negative to the music in this game, which may well be a Switch specific problem, is that it lacks a lot of clarity and bombast. It sounds a lot more compressed than previous titles, and I can't help but wonder if that's something to do with the porting of the game to the Switch. If that is the case, it is lazy and could have been avoided. The complete opposite issue to what happened with Dragon Quest XI, which was ported to the Switch. In terms of visuals, for players who are new to this trilogy, Call Steel 3 has all the visual trappings of a low-budget JRPG. It doesn't have the dynamic style and visual flair of Persona 5, or the ridiculous polish and animations of Final Fantasy VII Remake. In fact, it has all the textures and animations of an early PS3 game, and that's been generous. But none of that matters. If ever a series existed to prove that graphical power is secondary to good writing characters, music and combat mechanics, it is Call Steel. The series sells itself on its interconnected world, of complex politics, war and class systems, not in its movie-like visual quality. What the game's visuals lack in graphical power, however, they make up for with an established and unique brand of art. In true JRPG fashion, Call Steel 3 opens with two unique anime cutscenes, and each character model has an anime equivalent which is shown off in menus and during certain combat moves. Beyond that, the design aspects of the game is very confident. The design of the towns and cities, down to the bricks and mortar, as well as the vehicles, the clothing, accessories, weapons and items, everything has been meticulously thought out to give this world and its people a firm sense of identity. That is perhaps the entire series' biggest selling point, identity. The visuals and design work to support the lore, history, politics and so on that has been written into this trilogy. For those who have played the first two games, this one does demonstrate a marked improvement in graphical quality. Character models are softer, with their angry edges smoothed out and textured. Details like Reen's coat flutters as he runs is a nice improvement. Hair is softer, clothes have more rich and dynamic colour palettes, and mouth animations during dialogue are more impressive. None of this is groundbreaking, but it is certainly welcome. 
There are two downsides to the visuals, however, and both may be related to the Switch port specifically, though I haven't played this game on another system to be able to say for sure. The first issue is a noticeable, if minor, drop in the frame rate during busy combat segments. The second is an odd kind of motion blur which happens around the edge of the character models and even the hood during combat. Regardless whether it's the characters or cameras that's moving, there is a fuzziness to the edges of the hair, clothes and everything. During combat this leads to important numbers like HP becoming blurry and it is an unavoidable distraction. Having seen PlayStation 4 footage of the game, I'm fairly sure this is an issue unique to the Switch port, which is a real disappointment for Switch players. In terms of value, few games offer this much in terms of value. You're getting an 80 plus hour JRPG experience with a solid and satisfying gameplay loop, an enormous rich and colourful cast of characters and a deep and broad world of vast lore. The music is Final Fantasy levels of quality, the voice acting is consistently strong, the art style is distinct and serves to support the lore themes, geography and so on. Quite simply, there is so much to immerse yourself in here, so much to see, so many people to talk with, to bond with, it's just a ton of content. The unfortunate reality, however, is that the Switch port of Trials of Cold Steel 3 is not the best version. The music is compressed, the animation and camera movement leads to motion blur, and the frame rate slows down for no excusable reason during combat. It is not a great port, to put it bluntly. None of this is a deal breaker, however, if you have a Switch and just want to give this series a go, then this version will serve you fine. Overall, Cold Steel 3 is a worthy third game in an already phenomenal JRPG series. It continues to build on an already incredible steampunk fantasy story, giving you more time with the characters you love and introduce more lovable protagonist to get to know. The combat and gameplay loops remain familiar but with enough tweaks to make it feel fresh, and the same goes for the improved music and visual design. For newcomers of the series, Call of Steel 3 isn't the ideal starting point, however it certainly it can be. If you have a Switch and you're intrigued by the series, please pick this game up. Few JRPG series can live up to the staggering world building lore and characters put here in the third game. It is an 8 out of 10. Alright, thanks very much to Will for putting this together. He's been busy these few weeks putting Brigandine and this one together, two big RPGs. Uh, be sure to check out Brigandine, he reviewed that a couple of days ago. Plus all our other content that we have, and head over to switchwatch.co.uk for all other stuff.